Hi, uh, we're going to talk about uh, the abdominal aorta today and uh, the use of it of looking with uh, ultrasound for aortic aneurysms. So, remember we're always looking for focused goals here when we use uh, bedside ultrasound and w what we're doing is essentially just evaluating for an abdominal aortic aneurysm. Um, there's some different definitions. I, you know, typically if it's greater than three centimeters that's going to be uh, an aneurysm. <clears throat> Um, although it doesn't always put them at risk for rupture until usually they're above five, um, but you know a quick, quickly dilating uh, aortic aneurysm can be at risk for rupture even before five. So you just need to have some uh, some caution with this. Um, additionally, <clears throat> it can be defined by having a 50% increase in the size uh, as you move distally along the abdominal aorta. Uh, typically, it tapers and gets smaller in diameter. <clears throat> However, um, you know, 50% increase would also um, um, be defined as an aortic aneurysm. Um, a couple things that I see novice people do, especially residents, um, when they talk about uh, use of ultrasound, they say, you know, they're concerned about dissection and um, they want to use ultrasound to um, rule out uh, aortic dissection. And it really is not a good test for that. You can see a dissection flap um, which could I guess you know, which can rule it in but it does not rule it out and so you just you really need to be careful with that and then in addition um, you know this does not tell you if that abdominal aortic aneurysm is ruptured or not um, it cannot identify the retroperitoneal bleed um, and so it can just tell you if it's if it's a large um, aortic aneurysm or not um, if you you could uh, you could apply a fast exam to look for free fluid in the abdomen. Likely, if somebody has free fluid in the abdomen, it's leaking um, into the abdominal cavity, and um, their risk of uh, mortality is going to be significantly higher because you don't have the tamponade effect for a retroperitoneal bleed. Um, but you could identify that. Um, either way, I would not delay care. I would try to get uh, you whoever does um, your repairs here will most likely your vascular surgeons involved as quickly as possible and never delay doing this uh, one of the big mistakes I also see residents do is that they come out and say I'm worried about an abdominal aortic aneurysm but I'm gonna go see this other patient and I've got to sew this laceration if you're concerned about this you need to go in and do this study immediately you need to uh, um, consider this uh, um, early on um, because for every minute they're in the ER, their mortality uh, significantly increases, increases and you want to uh, give them the best chance of survival. So make sure you use this test early. It's non-invasive um, and, and a good way to uh, be able to save somebody's life. So for our probe, we're going to use a low frequency probe um, and we want a wide footprint. This is just important because a lot of, especially in our um, our obese population it's hard to get a good view of the aorta and we want to see good um, dimensions is uh, the dimensions the best we can um, and we want that wide footprint sometimes that helps us to, uh, to displace or make the bowel peristalsis to get out of the way um, and it allows you to put a little more pressure and not make the person feel like you punched them in the gut as long as you apply, apply uh, slow constant pressure they should be able to tolerate it pretty well and even a very obese patient you can put a quite a bit of pressure on trying to find that uh, aneurysm. So just review of anatomy because that's mostly what we're going to focus on today. I'm not going to do a lot of pathology. We'll do that in uh, some other video uh, videos to just kind of show some different uh, um, things you can see uh, so you're aware of those. Um, but the abdominal aorta comes out at the aortic hiatus right here. Uh, which is at about T12 and goes down to uh, about L4 which is around the belly button and it bifurcates. Um, you can follow the iliacs to look for iliac aneurysms. I'm not going to go into that in depth but I would do that if somebody had a um, decreased pulses on one side um, or something similar to that. Uh, you will not see the IMA by ultrasound. You will see the you can see the celiac trunk and you should see the SMA just depending on the patient. So I like to take what I call a quick look. So I start with the um, probe high um, 
right under the subxiphoid process and I like to drag it down to the belly button. And it's what this allows me to do is this allows me to just say, do I have an aneurysm or not? I've got to deal with. It. And if it's a big aneurysm, I can, you know, ask one of the nurses or ask one of the clerks to get a hold of or page vascular surgery and go back and get my accurate measurements in a minute. But it can also, you know, re remove a lot of worry. I can look at it and say, okay, this is not a large aortic aneurysm or there's no aneurysm. And then I can go back and get, um, the saved calculations or saved measurements uh, for the study uh, to support my my diagnosis but you know no matter if you know this is a 10 second video um, that I can know whether there's an aneurysm or not and I just think it's a good easy way to do that and that's what we see here in the video clip is essentially dra going down and we'll we'll go through each one of these levels of anatomy here so and the proximal abdom abdominal aorta uh, is defined as being above the SMA. Um, you, it's hard to get above the SMA in a lot of people. Uh, I try, you know, try to go as high as you can above the subdiphoid process. If you're really struggling, you could use, a, I guess, I guess, a phased array probe to help you get up there a little bit higher. Um, but I just try to get as high as I can uh, comfortably. Um, and what you should see in your view is you should see your liver here as we have defined in the purple and the big thing I want that I see novice people do or novice um, users of ultrasound is they don't define this vertebral body and you really want to see this vertebral body it will be a hyper um, echogenic um, or curvature with some shadowing behind it and then you want to see the aorta usually um, anterior and a little left or it may just be anterior to this and that's what we want to look at and we can see the celiac trunk which will come up and split to the splenic artery and hepatic artery and if you look at it it looks like a bird kind of flying um, some people call it the seagull sign um, and that's a good thing to look for now you will not see this on everybody um, some patients just it's it's not visible sometimes they're so they are obese and you just can't see it but if you can get this high that's that's ideal um, and sometimes it won't be all in plane in one cut so you may see segments of it um, but at least that will define that you're in the proximal abdominal aorta and so if we take a live picture of that this is what we can see here we can see that seagull sign right here um, going on I think we'll play this as a video let me see here yeah let me get this out of the way so here's a here's a different one than what we were looking at there but we can see our aorta is right here and the celiac trunk is coming up and coming over a little bit. Here's our splenic artery coming this way. And here's our hepatic artery. Here's our vertebral body. We don't quite see the hyperechoic line, but we can tell that's there. Here's our IVC. This is going to be actually uh, our splenic vein coming across. And we'll talk about that here a little bit more on the next, next clip. So this first part, you know, kind of the proximal abdominal aorta and then the mid-abdominal aorta kind of happens quick. Um, you don't have to drag down a lot because you're going to hit... Um, the the renal arteries and that's by definition where the mid aorta is it's kind of the sma down to the renal arteries and that's what we're seeing on going on here is we have our once again our vertebral body right here and you and i don't i'm not going to go too into depth but here you'll see this space and that's just because you're looking for an, through an intravertebral disc so don't don't let this confuse you that this is the vertebral body way down here this is it up here right along there here's our aorta sitting right on top Here's our SMA, and we're watching this video. It comes right off. You can see that little branch coming off, and it's right here. And then we've got some vessels coming across here. And so let's uh, go ahead and look at what that anatomy is. So we have our vertebral body right here. Aorta sitting just a little bit anterior, or is sitting anterior and a little bit to the left. Remember, this is the patient's right over here, and this is the patient's left. Um, we have a vessel that comes from left to right that goes between the SMA and the aorta and this jumps right into the IVC and that's our left renal artery. The vessel that goes anterior to the SMA or superficial to it is actually our splenic vein which is going to turn into our portal vein. And sometimes we can see the liver, not always. Um, in this, this particular uh, anatom anatomy picture I've included that and we'll also see that here in this, this photo here. So once again here's our aorta right there. Here's our vertebral body with, that we want to see. IVC, you can see that left renal vein. It gets pretty thin right there, but that's it coming across right between the SMA, which is right here, and the aorta. And then you have the splenic vein coming across, which is going to eventually come over and, and become the portal vein. So uh, let's see a video here of that so we can appreciate that. So vertebral body, 
aorta. You have you can see the renal veins, a renal artery coming off here and one here. Uh, you don't always see those, so you know, especially in bedside ultrasound, that's not a focus that we're looking at. But we, if we do see those, it's kind of a bonus to define where we're where we are. And we've got our uh, uh, IVC, and then we see that vein coming through here, um, and that's what I typically look for uh, to define that I'm at the level of the renal renal vein or the renal arteries and vein. And here's our splenic vein up here up top. Okay. Then, so everything distal to the renal veins is considered the distal abdominal aorta. Uh, the belly, because of lordosis, you'll see this gets superficial. And you sometimes have to decrease your depth. I should have done that here, but I was worried we'd distort the anatomy a little too much. But here's our vertebral body again. Don't get that confused with the aorta, because I've seen people do that. But remember, it's got shadowing. You can't see that posterior wall. Now, if it was really calcified, you might not be able to see that. But you need to, you know, use this as a landmark. And we can see this aorta here. Now you can see we actually come down, and so from the renal veins down to the bifurcation is the distal aorta. And 95% of your aneurysms are going to occur in this space, and so it's really important that you evaluate that space well. And we can see it come down, and you can actually see a split here. Here's one anechoic space right there, coming over here, and one there, and that's the actual iliacs bifurcating. And so you know, seeing those is is important because that tells you that you've evaluated the uh, uh, distal aorta. Um, where most of those aneurysms are going to occur. So we're going to kind of get a view like this. Um, you know, the rest is kind of white no noise. There is some, um, you know, the fascial planes and, and bowel and everything there. But mostly uh, we're going to see focus on our vertebral body. We're going to see iliacs. They're going to split, usually something similar to this. And we may or may not see the IVC. Uh, sometimes you'll encounter it. Sometimes you won't. Um, it's for whatever reason we can, and some people and others we can't. And so that's what we're going to see here in this, uh, this little segment. Um, let me back up here. And we've had some degradation of this, this image, and I apologize about that. But here's our iliac artery, iliac artery. Here's our uh, IVC. And here's our vertebral body right there. Okay. Then I like to come back, and then I actually don't take measurements until I get back to here. And I go... Uh, I look at the vertebral body and I come back and, and just see the aorta just proximal to where that bifurcation happens. And you can see this IVC and that's where I'll get my measurement. Now I haven't talked a lot about measurements but we're going to do it right here. Is on your machine I like to hit calipers and you can do it essentially in any direction but I personally like to do it anterior to posterior. Some textbooks say it's a more accurate measurement uh, from left to right but I find this easiest to do. And you want to do outer wall to outer wall. Um, like I said in this video, we're not going to talk, or we're not going to show a lot of path. We're not going to show pathology, but uh, sometimes when you have a big thrombus in the wall, you you can get fooled, um, and you really need to focus on that you're you're evaluating the entire space. But throw your calipers down, put one on the distal wall, another on the other side, um, and you know you're not. I don't I don't zoom in on these. You're talking centimeters, not usually millimeters. So it's not you know one millimeter is not going to make a big difference if you're off on these in my opinion. So after you look that way, I like to go back and look with a uh, vision or view of the abdominal aorta in a long view. This allows me sometimes to look a little bit more proximal and up into the chest a little bit. Uh, I've caught some uh, descending um, thoracic aortic aneurysms before doing this. Um, and so I like to take a look and you're going to angle it up into the chest a little bit and that's why it gives this sloped appearance because of your angling. But essentially what you're going to see is you're going to see vertebral bodies coming down here in the posterior with the, the uh, uh, shadowing behind them. Your aorta is going to lay right on top of that. Your probe marker is towards the head, you're in midline, just a little bit off to the left, uh, paramedial. And we have our aorta and we're going to see our celiac trunk come off. We're not going to see that branching like we did because we're not in that plane. But we will see the SMA. Now sometimes you can catch it and the SMA is going to go completely all the way down with it. Um, but I like to get this view, look up here and kind of make sure there's no aneurysms. And I'm also looking for saccular aneurysms that sometimes can get missed instead of a fusiform aneurysm which we can typically find well the other way. So here we see the same you know, video of this. We see some vertebral bodies back in here. Here's our aorta, this anechoic space, nice wall. Here's our SMA coming down right here. Here's our celiac trunk. And we're caching the, capt capturing this in a cross section. Um, and this is going to be our splenic vein coming across. Well, sorry, this is going to be our splenic vein up here coming across just in front of that SMA. 
And then um, I don't drag down a lot, but you are going to drag a little bit to the towards the feet. But since you were before angled up into the chest a little bit, we're going to just kind of stand that probe straight up. And that will a lot of times get you right down to seeing um, the distal end of the aorta. And it's going to end in this blind pouch because remember it's going to split, it's going to bifurcate and you're going to essentially go out of plane. But you can see that the aorta comes down like this and you'll have this blind pouch and you want to track it down and sometimes you have to rotate your probe a little bit clockwise and counterclockwise to follow a tortuous aorta um, but you want to get to this point and make sure that there's no saccular aneurysm down here now don't get confused with these things because that's bowel um, that you can see lying in anterior to it and here's your vertebral bright he's nice and bright you have some of these anechoic space dropouts and that's your intervertebral disc um, well, that wraps it up for just the basic anatomy of an abdominal aortic uh, evaluation. Uh, we'll have some pathology and some different videos um, just to keep these videos short. If you have any questions, um, please let, feel free to let us know or comments. Um, 